Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Tonight we're going to talk some pigs with you. We're going to give you an update on what's going on with our pigs. For those of you that have followed along on our channel, well, you know about a, um, six, seven weeks ago, we'll call it, we made an agreement with a local brewery here in eastern Pennsylvania, picking up uh, some brewer's grain. It turned into a weekly thing for us. So we want to kind of fill you in on what's going on here as far as what type of growth these pigs are putting on, how this brewer's grain is working out for us, and really the big one, how much money we're saving by using this and, and being lucky enough to, to have this pick up weekly. So let's dive into it a little bit for you. You can see Ziggy here behind, he is caked in mud. It's hot here, so he's been kind of laying in the mud that he can find, and this actually isn't even bad for what it was before. All right, so I got the little one on my back here and you can see these guys kind of cleaning up the little bit of grain that's left here. We are primarily feeding brewer's grain at this point. I'm picking up about 300 pounds a week, um, which serves, I mean, it, it pretty much works perfectly for the, the pigs that we have here. So we have the six, we'll call them feeders um, because now they are several months old. They're gonna be the ones that are gonna be processed off here in the winter. You're gonna call them baby pigs? All right, we're gonna call them baby pigs, she's telling me, um, but they are several months old, so bear with us there. Um, Ziggy and Betsy are our two breeding pair, our boar and our sow. They're gonna stick around with us for a while. So call it eight pigs total. Big, they are they're getting really big yes they are so eight pigs total um, and 300 pounds a week I mean it's we're obviously feeding in regular um, grower feed as well but this is a bulk of what we're feeding them at this point um, 300 pounds and the pigs are putting on a good size to this point these guys are American guinea hog and Hampshire crosses so they're gonna be a slower grow pig. Um, they're about six months old right now. So it's gonna take them time. Where a lot of pigs, you know, you're gonna be harvest weight in seven, eight months. We're gonna be upwards of a year and maybe even a little over a year. I'm thinking processing probably end of the year, maybe even beginning of um, next year, call it January. Um, so at that point it'd be 13 months. Um, and that's probably gonna be about the sweet spot for us. But that's okay um, because fortunately, this feed that we're picking up has subsidized our costs or reduced our costs substantially um, from what we were at last year. Our last pigs, um, and it was the same breed, the, the AGH Hampshire Cross, we finished them out at about $3.65 a pound. Would have been lower, but unfortunately we did lose um, a couple along the way actually. Let me call him Spot. <laughs> and we're naming them as we go here, I guess. That's one thing we're not really um, doing too much of here is naming our pigs, except for the ones that are sticking around for we us. Have two spots. There's two spots? Yeah. Oh, they do. They have, they have black spots in their eyes. So, anyway, we were at $3.65 a pound last year, how we finished them out. This year, I've already picked up eight uh, loads of this grain. So, at 300 pounds a piece, 2,400 pounds total. I mean, that's that's a lot of grain. That's definitely going to, to pull your costs down substantially. Now it is really, really difficult uh, to kind of compare the nutritional value to this stuff versus your traditional hog grower mash or whatever it is, your pellets. You just don't know. Um, and, and brewer's grains, if you guys are familiar with that whole process, obviously if they're gonna be doing different um, styles of beer, they're going to be using a little bit of a different grain base um, a lot of it is going to be barley based, wheat based, things like that, um, which is pretty high in nutrition that's going to be transferred over to your pig. Um, I would say barley, from what I'm seeing, is about 10 to 12 percent protein content. Your typical hog grower is going to be 14 to 16 percent. 
give or take. Obviously, you know, there's not, not always an exact science there. Um, but sometimes this fermented brewer grain, the, the blends um, from everything I've kind of read on them, it can be upwards of 20% uh, protein. So as long as you're kind of in that ballpark, you're going to be in business and it's going to give you the same um, effect. If you do go too low though, um, you know, corn, that's something we fed a little more of last year. We were just getting into it. We were still kind of learning. Being these are lard pigs already, um, that lower protein content, you're going to get a lot more fat on, on an AGH. That's what they're known for. The Hampshire is more of a bacon pig. Uh, we've talked about this at length in the past. But it is, I believe, at least for us right now, it's important to feed them a higher protein um, diet, trying to get a little more lean meat on them and, and get them a little bit bigger in time. And again, guys, we have time to do this. We're not in a rush to get these to market or anything like this. These are solely um, for family and friends at this point. And it might come to a point at the end of the year where, hey, if we want to change up the breed, if we want something a little larger, um, I'm willing to do that as well. But We'll see what happens here over the course of the year. But anyway, this grain, it is not the most pleasant stuff. Um, I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but this is pretty much what you're looking at here. It is, well, exactly probably what you think it would look like. It is on the wet side. Um, however, they are trying to keep it somewhat dry for us um, as far as when they get it into barrels and pick up. A lot of times this stuff's gonna come out actually dripping wet. This stuff is just moist here. As you can imagine with that, when it's wet, um, it is susceptible to mold, especially when it's hot like this. So it'll last us about a week max. Um, I try to usually get it through within like five days or so. There's a lot of bugs, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of bugs um, that, that swarm this stuff. It is pretty nasty smelling. I mean, it is leftover brewer's waste so it smells like a big barrel of beer um well sour beer i guess you would say and there are definitely some downfalls like i said the shelf life isn't going to be there for you you're not gonna be able to store it so whatever the quantity is that you get um you definitely have to find a way to feed that um or else it's just going to go bad on you and then you're going to be disposing of just a, a pile of well nastiness and you don't want to do that so anyway I'll look again this is pretty much what you're looking at and um, it does change from time to time like I mentioned so I guess you could consider that to be kind of a uh, downfall if you're really trying to feed a specific diet. But with all that being said I am convinced at this point that the cost savings um, is definitely going to outweigh any sort of um, potential um, cons to this product. So the easiest way to put it for you, and most of you that have raised animals will understand this comparison, my 300 pound pickup is going to be um, comparable to six 50 pound sacks of commercial uh, hog grower. So right now a decent quality hog grower is gonna run us in this area about $20 a piece. So r multiply that across six bags and you have $120 every time I pick up. Right now we're about $960 to $1,000 in savings um, at this point in, in uh, the life cycle of these animals. So pretty incredible considering last year our all-in cost, and now granted we raised two, two less animals, um, it was about $2,700 total and we're already saving $1,000 off of that. So our all-in cost would end up being more, being that we're raising two more animals but when you take $1,000 off the top already, and then you know we're only a few months into this, um, the savings are gonna continue to kind of build up for us. So at this point in time, it's fair for us to assume as long as you know this continues to go, and, and fortunately the brewery seems to be doing very well. So if anything, we might get increased in our, our um, overall pickup volume here. But it's fair for us to assume that about five or so five or six months left we'll call it 20 weeks just for simplicity um over the course of 20 weeks at 120 dollars a week savings we're talking about 2400 dollars that we're um, potentially going to save till the end of this uh cycle here with these animals um so pretty incredible results for us I and mean, that's something i'm really happy about and then take into consideration the thousand dollars roughly that we've already saved We'll ballpark this and say it might end up being about $3,500 
that we're gonna save with, um, with picking up this brewer's grain. I am still supplementing with traditional feed just to make sure that they're getting uh, the nutrient content that they're going to need to continue to grow. But I'm definitely a huge believer in just observing your animals. I know kind of based on how these guys grew last time, um, we're definitely tracking very similarly, if not better. Um, I actually think we might be a hair better this time. So that leads me to think definitely um, we're, we're heading in a positive direction as far as giving them what they're going to need here. And we're actually at the point where they don't even have the forage that they had um, last year. So we're hopeful to get them into um, a new pasture here. So they have forage on top of the feed that they're getting. And I think at that point, we're really gonna start to see uh, the size put on these animals. Enough of my ramble. I wanted to get that out to you tonight, kind of give you some figures and really, you know, what we're looking at here, kind of the, the results that we're seeing with this free brewer's grain. Um, it's definitely something that I really appreciate being able to do. Um, and I also think it's awesome that, you know, it's a waste product for another business that they quite frankly have to pay to get rid of because it's a lot of volume. We come there, we pick it up, we help them out. They're in turn helping us out. Um, so we need more of that stuff going on where, where these um, systems are working together and kind of, you know, playing off of each other. And I think it's outstanding and it's definitely something that I'm happy we were able to get our hands on and would encourage you to do the same thing if possible. I understand it's definitely a challenge to find people that are willing to do it. Um, and a lot of it is spoken for. I've, I've talked to numerous uh, breweries and distilleries before I got a hold of this one. Um, so it's definitely a challenge. It's definitely become a popular thing. But there's other ways to do it. You know, there's other ways to find sources of scrap food that would otherwise be thrown away. Um, so definitely go out there, give it a shot. The worst thing, and, and this is kind of the barrier that it, it took me a while to, to kind of work up the courage, but the worst thing they're gonna say to you is, is simply no. Um, they're not gonna, most people aren't gonna get offended. You might have some people that look at you a little funny, but at the end of the day, um, it's just gonna be a no one way or another. So once you get past that, well then you just start you know firing away and eventually, eventually you'll, you'll get a yes. It might take, 50 of them but you'll you'll definitely get a yes and when you do finally get that yes this one's very important you show up when you say you're going to show up and you show that you can be trusted um, at their facilities or whatever it is right now we're to the point where i'm pretty much going there picking up and within five minutes you know that that exchange is over you know not wasting anybody's time you know, i'm not showing up late and people are waiting on me it's to the point where i'm out there actually just going there, picking it up myself and, and dropping empties. And that's kind of how we're cycling it week to week, but very important to build that relationship um, and, and get it started on a positive note. Um, because it, at the end of the day, if you're going to burden somebody, they're not going to want to give, you know, free product to you either. So just some things I've learned um, in this short time. And I hope this helped you guys. Our pigs are growing along very nicely here and we are excited. I was just talking about it today. Really excited to, process again this year the amount we've learned in just one season um, is is pretty awesome honestly um, so i'm excited to kind of try some new techniques as far as um, the butchering process but we will definitely keep you guys updated on all those thoughts as we uh, get up to that point so the sun is setting and i got a little one on my back that has probably heard me talk way too much about pigs tonight right brett <laughs> i don't know if you heard that but she said yeah so we'll say goodnight to the pigs and we will be with you guys soon. If you like what we're doing, as always, please consider hitting that thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We really appreciate your support, guys. We're closing in on 1,500 subscribers here, um, which is crazy. A little less than a year of doing this whole YouTube journey. And we're having fun with it. We just come out here. We do what we can. We show you guys what we can. We're learning along the way. And we understand that we don't know everything, never claim to anyway, but we're out here having a good time and hopefully you guys are learning something from us. So a little bit of a different one for you tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed and we will see you again soon. Thanks guys.